In this Tobacco University video, we're going to go over how to identify and control fusarium in cannabis plants. While fusarium is considered to be a soil-borne disease, we can see it infects the stems as well as upper portions of the plant as well, so I don't think it's only isolated to the roots. We're going to go over how to identify and control fusarium in cannabis plants here. So first off, the identification of fusarium. Well, fusarium will, in crown rot, which are caused by the fusarium species. Cannabis plants will have a wilted appearance and discoloration in the vascular tissue. Here we see the wilted appearance. Here we see that kind of right at the soil line, that discoloration. And if we cut into the stem, we're going to see kind of this kind of brownish coloration uh, as the plant gets into the um, internal components of the plant. Physical damage by a mechanical insect or nematodes to the roots can also increase the severity and rate of spread of fusarium. As well as if a grower overwaters plants or plants receive excess nitrogen, this can also uh, cause them to be more prone to fusarium infections. Note this is a common occurrence when high amounts of compost have been added to a plant, as this does increase the water holding capacity as well as typically the nitrogen, and that will encourage fusarium to proliferate in that substrate of that plant. Now, word of caution with uh, fusarium is that the infection of female buds and grains is a serious and underestimated disease that may result in contamination by fusarium mycotoxins. Cornell has found contamination of hemp grain to exceed seven parts per million um, of this deal than all. So keep in mind that while it's a root disease, can affect upper portions of the plant, can cause mycotoxins to develop, can cause some severe issues. So don't think it's only limited just to the root section of a plant. Now the general life cycle of fusarium, it's important to understand a life cycle because where you can break that life cycle, interrupt it in some way, might be a way you could reduce its severity. Now when we're looking at our life cycle, those kind of small little portions, those germinating spores, penetrating the uh, lateral roots, causing it to kind of proliferate, causing it to get into the internal structure of the plant. Here we see that uh, occurring. Well, those wound areas are just encouraging that. Now we're getting into the vesicles of the plant, particularly the xylem, which is the water transporting vesicles of the plant. And then it goes through and it really clogs the xylem. That's where we saw that kind of brown image. Brown image is because all those little fusarium spores are in there clogging up the xylem, limiting the water transport, causing the plant to wilt. Then it proliferates from there, it breaks out, can get on the leaves, can then spread and break off, get back into the soil, proliferate there, and then kind of repeat the cycle again. So keep in mind this fusarium, think about it, it's initially affecting the roots, but really affects a lot of portions of the plant. So how do you go about controlling it? Well, indoor and outdoor applications. Uh, both of these, we could look at um, on other plant species. Pseudomonas strains have, uh, have several endophytes, such as trichoderma strains, have offered better control than mycorrhizae fungi, bacillus, and non-pathogenic fusarium strains. So the pseudomonas or trichodermas uh, might be worth investigating as biological controls. Uh, this is one product, this is another product that does contain trichoderma species. If you're growing cannabis in an outdoor location on a large scale, it may not be as uh, advantageous to apply these products. So crop rotations that have some effectiveness if levels are initially low when they're first identified. Incorporating mustard cover crop can help, but really if you identify it specifically as fusarium, you might want to look at the cover crop called hairy vetch. This has shown suppression of fusarium in fields planted with watermelon. Uh, to eliminate field to field transfer via tools and equipment, you want to make sure you're not transferring soil either. So eliminate soil transfers, you're not infecting multiple fields if you have them. Plant maybe some hairy vetch to get some nitrogen benefit, as well as suppress fusarium in the soil. And there's also some biological controls that exist. Goals to identify early to try to suppress it. Key part being, if possible, if you identify an area that does have fusarium, rotate out, give that soil a rest, plant some cover crops, and then come back later uh, with your crop of choice.